Hey guys, how's it going? We wanted to do a Q&A video for you because I don't know how long it's been since we've done a video I think like this. It's been this. quite a while. Quite a long time. Um, and Aaron decided to join me today. He's going to be asking the questions, but we also wanted to tell you a couple of things before we actually jump into the actual Q&A part of the video. Um, the first thing is We have merch. We do. We have merch. I'm not wearing it cuz I had to pull it out of the dirty clothes hamper this morning, but check it out. Shirts. So we have uh, men's and women's t-shirts right now. Um, and mugs. And mugs. Yeah. And then we'll be offering other things from time to time. Like I, we're looking into... Um, three quarter length shirts? Yeah, three quarter length shirts because I wear those a lot. Um, also long sleeve like uh, pullover, like sweatshirt mm -hmm. type of things. Hoodies. Hoodies. Um, we also just got some onesies yesterday. Yeah, he looks so cute. Oh, Benjamin looks so cute in it. Anyway, we have ordered so many different styles of t-shirts and other things just to try them out before we offered them to you guys because we wanted to make sure we liked the way they felt and all of that kind of thing. So anyway, we got a brand new logo and it's really exciting. Anyway, and we're blown away. Yeah, by you, last I checked, there were I think over 500 sales for t-shirts, which is crazy. I didn't think there'd be anywhere close to that Neither number. did I. I actually told Aaron like, if we sold a hundred t-shirts, that would be amazing. Yeah. And I can't even believe. Is insane. Yeah. So thank you guys to all of you who have already bought a t-shirt or a mug, um, because that actually directly supports our channel. It directly supports what we do. Um, so it just allows us to do more stuff to show you guys, which we enjoy doing. So hopefully it's a win-win uh, win for everybody. So anyway, that was the first thing. The second thing we wanted to tell you is that we actually do have a second YouTube channel. Yeah. We've gotten a lot of messages from you guys saying hey I think somebody's stealing your content and putting up videos They're on not. another channel no it's actually our channel um, Aaron started it yeah it was more of a test actually so we didn't want to promote it because we didn't want to say like hey there's this awesome second channel you should go subscribe and then not have it be awesome so we didn't really <laughs> talk about it for a while it's maybe getting more awesome I don't know what do you think I think it's pretty pretty nice I think it serves a different purpose than our main channel because what we've done or what Aaron has done is he takes our longer videos where I ramble on for like 30 minutes and he'll take out something like a nugget of a, <laughs> a nugget, nugget of education out of that video and he'll make it all a video just all about that so like string of pearls care guide was like 20 minutes long mm -hmm. i talked about propagating string of pearls like at minute 15 so we thought you know what if i just took that part of the video out and made just a propagating string of pearls video maybe that would be helpful for some people that are just searching for that um so that's kind of what it is it's condensed versions yeah. of our other videos so it's probably a little bit redundant although we are putting some vlogs on there yeah. that either didn't turn out the way we wanted to or, or they're like behind the scenes it's called garden answer highlights and you can go check it out if you want to there are a couple videos you may not have seen yet because they're not on this channel so anyway those are the couple things we wanted to tell you um so now i think we're just going to jump into the q a i put it out on twitter just saying we were going to film this and if you guys had any questions let us know so there was a lot of good ones okay first question mosquitoes and ticks you spend a lot of time outside and don't seem to be bothered by them do you have anything special or are you one of the lucky ones that just aren't bothered by them yes she is not bothered by them. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but I've already gotten stung, like on my forehead this morning. Mosquito bite. Or you don't call it stung, bit, bit. by a mosquito. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dying behind the camera, getting eaten alive, and she's just sitting over here like, what? I don't see any mosquitoes. No. I get so mad because they never bother her. No, but the they flies bother, bother me. me. Yeah, flies, you do have flies. Flies like I wonder come, why. they are attracted. I don't know. It always happens. It seems like during the church service, like maybe they smell there's the dirt got on to you. be somebody in that room that smells worse than I do. Maybe it's all the fertilizer you use. Maybe <laughs> they smell it. It's like in my skin or something. <laughs> I don't know. I spend the whole church service like, and I mean, they're crawling on my face and yeah. Okay, anyway. tell us about some of your failed projects. Oh. <laughs> just so that I know I'm not alone in this. Which one should I start with? I don't know. There's so many. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. There is not. There's actually not. You don't ever, do you ever really like. Full on fail. Full on fail. Some things just don't perform the way you want. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I would say like last year we oh, planted. Oh, the jellyfish project. <laughs> That's pretty much a fail. <laughs> That's right there. <laughs> That's only a half fail. It's well, the yeah, dichondra the dichondra looks, looks pretty awesome, awesome but the impatience The impatience are out. I'm not planting impatience anymore. I'm done. They don't I am really work so that done. well. I don't know if it's just me. So that's a fail. Impatience are a fail for impatience, me. Yeah. Um I don't know why. They were great in our last garden. Last, I planted them in oh. I planted, <laughs> planted them in the landscape in our last garden and they were awesome. Do you remember? 
Oh, I do. We have a. F- do we have we a have, photo? We of have that? a photo. We'll okay. try to find it and yeah, we'll put it on the it. screen because it. They were amazing, and now at this garden, it's like I've lost my touch. I don't know. Anyway, last year we put Super Tuna yeah, Bordeaux say that. in front of the house, like along our walkway, and it looked good for about a month or maybe two months. But the water uh, maybe two and a half or so, wow. but it was getting too much water. It was getting way too that much. That was water. kind of my fault too with the sprinklers because the sprinklers were hitting them, and it was just too much. And I think you were watering them too on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. So I didn't know that they were getting water by the sprinklers. That was a big old miscommunication. And I think that's probably the most most of the time the reason why people fail or why we fail is because you just don't realize I'm mean, watering issues or maybe like exposure exposure issues mm-hmm. that you just aren't anticipating. But it's a learning process and now yeah. that area looks fantastic. Yeah, so like I the think the stuff you put in there this year is amazing. I think failures are probably good in the garden because you learn a lot from them. I they do. They can be expensive though sometimes. Yeah. Like last year we had to re- I pulled all the bordeaux and I planted some really pretty cabbage and pansies, but I always try to especially with in-ground plantings, I try to do things that will last through a hard frost. That way I don't feel like I need to be out there planting more stuff. And um, that's way that way I'm only, you know, it's less work and less money um, to do it that way. We were sweating bullets about the arborvitas we planted last oh, year. yeah. Because they started to get brown and kind of sun scorched. And we planted them at like 110 or whatever it was. It was. A, no, it was 104 that day. 104. 104 is way too hot to be planting <clears throat> anyway. I mean, we do it. Yeah. But, you know, you run the risk and of something not thriving. And there were six, there were 65 arborvitas. If we would have had, I mean, we had three. We replaced three out of 65, which I think in any situation, that's a really good, is that ratio? Yeah. Yeah. I moved houseplants outdoors early this summer, mostly succulents and orchids. How can I assure the insects haven't taken up residence before I move the plants back indoors this fall? Just take a really good look at them. Look under the leaves, on top of the leaves, look in the soil. You'll see if there's bugs going on. Is there an insecticide that she can uh, use? Yeah, you could use like a neem-based or an insecticidal soap. Um, Bonide's got a couple of them. Uh, that you can use that are organic, totally safe. And it's a good idea, even if you don't see bugs, just to give them a spray um, and spray the soil around them in case there's any bugs like um, living in the media, medium, (laughs) media. (laughs) I don't know why I always say that. Uh, Anyway, yeah, use something that's just a really mild organic and that way you kind of cover your bases before you bring them in. We did a video about moving houseplants inside. Oh yeah. We'll try to remember to link it below. Can you do a day in the life video? I don't know if that would be a super exciting video. It feels really redundant to me. I do the same things every single day. I mean, there's a lot of watering. I'm trying to squeeze in as much garden maintenance as I can around like video projects and trying to spend as much time with Benjamin as I can as well. The vlogs that you film when you're kind of on your own, those are kind of day in the life. They don't show you, you know, True. getting up and getting ready, but it does kind of show That wouldn't be interesting. Nobody, I don't think any of you guys would like to see that. But that's sort of true life i mean it's yeah. not we're not putting on no it's what i'm what i have planned for that day yeah and, mm-hmm. i'm curious to see how the crescent self-watering pots along your fence line are doing it was such a pretty mix of super tunias. so i really like the colors that i chose for those pots this year um we are going to do a like a legit uh, update update video they look good though they i look think they good. look nice they don't look quite as glorious as they have in past years um they did last they, year and the year before uh, didn't we have them the year before? No, I think just this is the second year. <laughs> they didn't look as glorious Time as they flies. did last year. Um, but they haven't had budworms at all this year, but they did get aphids. So yeah. I had to spray a few times for aphids. Uh, and that kind of sets the plants back a little bit. And these just have a little bit of a different growth habit. I think by anyone's criteria, they look good. I Yeah, I mean, I think they're pretty. You guys will see them. We'll show them to you. Yeah, they look good. How is Proven Winter's shipping process? Is it risky to order plants online and mm-hmm. have them delivered? So obviously getting plants at your local garden center is the best option. And well, I, you can see what they look like and yeah. just like hand pick what you want. Oftentimes you get bigger ones too. Yeah. Oftentimes it's just available. You have a lot bigger plants available. Um, so, you know, talk to your local garden center. If they're not carrying proven winners, they should be. Um, we try to bring in as much as possible. My mom does all the ordering. So she's always like trying to find as many proven winners mm-hmm. varieties as she can. Um, you know, I think it depends on where you order them from too. If you go yeah. to provenwinners.com, that's like, you know, straight from the horse's mouth. So it's, that's going to be the best way to order plants. And I know for a fact that if you have any issues with like, if they sat at the sip shipping center for too long or if there was some, if like there freak was accident. some, yeah, <laughs> whatever happened, mm-hmm. um, they were mishandled, they'll make it right. So mm-hmm. if you ever contacted them and you weren't happy with your order, they would make it right. 
I've but, had a good experience too. Typically we get our plants, like we'll um, get some things like flower pillows we order in and um, a few other things we'll get in the yeah. spring. I don't order stuff in the middle of the summer because it's just, it's tough on anything to ship in the, when it's so hot. So it's usually spring or fall and I've had a really good experience. I'd love to know how long it typically takes to edit a video and what Aaron's and yours, Laura, uh, favorite editing program tools are. So it takes me maybe like two to five hours, depending on the video mm -hmm. to edit uh, start to finish to get like the thumbnail done and to get it uploaded and the whole editing process mm -hmm. and then uh, I use Final Cut Pro to edit and then you do a, you edit a lot of the photos yeah and so, take a lot of the photos yeah I take most of the photos and edit those and I don't even know what program I edit them in I just it's just the regular photos Aaron puts app. them on the computer yeah. and I get in there <laughs> but he photos. does all the video I don't do any video except for when I do vlogs I do the video <laughs> it's never as good sorry oh, I think they're good I like them. How do you not have budworms? Okay, so this year is the first year we have not dealt with budworms and it's because we took preventative measures. So usually we, all of our super tunias and super bells get afflicted with it and then we are without blooms for like weeks while mm -hmm. the plants are trying to recover. So this year we decided to start spraying before the budworms hit. So I think we sprayed for maybe like five or six weeks, once a week with BT, which is Bacillus thuringiensis. Which and it's is, not hard to do either. No, it's a totally organic spray that does not hurt the honeybees. Um, so I don't feel bad at being out there just, just spraying the plants yeah. down. And our plants have done great this year. Yeah, I had, I didn't see one. Did Except you? for the aphids on the true drops, but those are the only pots that got aphids. Mm. Um, and I took care of that pretty quick, so. What are your most watched videos so far? I love seeing when they get tons of views. Just curious which ones have the most. You would know, I don't know. So on YouTube, our most popular is the um, Antique Doble project. Uh, I think That one got a lot of hate and slash love. Slash concern for the plant. A lot of people liked it too though. There was a lot of likes yeah. on it, a lot of positive comments. So it was an Antique Doble that was beautiful that a customer brought down to the garden center and she wanted me to plant it. So it was not my decision to put plants in this Antique Doble. But I did it because the customer wanted it. And I lined the whole thing with really thick plastic so it was totally safe. It wasn't mm. like I was harming the bowl or anything unless somebody was being really too much with the water. Generous with too the water. generous <laughs> with the water, I guess. Um, but there was also concern about the type of plants I put together in that uh, bowl. I'm just so used to putting whatever I want in containers because in like contained stuff, I use a syringe so I can direct the water right to where I want it to go. and. You know, after a certain amount of years working with plants, you can kind of read them and you can kind of know what plants need what and what you can put together and what you can get away with. I don't know, like if you were a beginner, I would say don't do that. Put really compatible stuff together. But um, once you get kind of down the road in your gardening experience, I think, you know, go for it and try different stuff out. But yeah. what, what about Facebook? Oh, on Facebook, our most popular is the um, pumpkin snowman <laughs> video, I is think. Is that? Yeah, most? I think it has like over 50 million views. That was kind of a fun project too, and mine lasted forever. Yeah, a lot of people said, oh, they're gonna rot right away, but Which they lasted they, through November. You know what though, that's probably correct. Like if it was a In hot, a warmer climate. like a hot, humid, but that year, remember it got it was cold. cold. It just froze the pumpkins right in place, and yeah. they lasted like what, past that Christmas? That was the same year that we had the crazy snow. Yeah. Remember how it got cold and snow? Yeah, 52 inches of snow. And you fell off the roof? I did fall off. <laughs> We didn't get film of that. No, it Should didn't hurt. Been. I fell off into a huge pile of snow, so it yeah. didn't even matter. Yeah, it wasn't a big I deal. I didn't even knock the air out of myself, I don't think. No, because you fell like three feet. Yeah. <laughs> Fun music questions. Doing any more music videos? Love the Hillsong cover you did with Monica. My sister. Yeah, what piece of music is sitting on your keyboard? Do either of you compose? Laura, do you sing? Oh, I Boy, wish. a lot of questions. I wish I could sing. I sing to Benjamin, poor little baby. He loves it. <laughs> he seems so to like it. So for context. We filmed a couple music videos before Garden Answer when I had first bought a camera and was playing around with it. And it was just something like... Something to, to put together. Yeah, something to do. I put those on my channel. I'm not going to link it below. If you want to play, go find <laughs> you them, wanna, you want to like try to dig it up, you yeah. can. <laughs> so that's what she's referring to. So um, Music on my keyboard right now. Yeah, what is it? Christmas music. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can play Christmas music all year round and it just makes me happy. It's festive. It is festive. It I just love puts it. you in a good mood Aaron no matter what time Christmas of year. Aaron likes Christmas music too. So yeah. like he's like one of the most festive men I know, which I'm so lucky. I love Christmas. It yeah. just hits you in the feels. It does hit you in the feels. So I am learning some really kind of tough Christmas music right now. So if you get on YouTube and look at John Bayless, White Christmas, listen to that song. That's what I'm playing right now. So many of us are budget gardeners and I was hoping you could point us in the direction of which flowers are the easiest to start from seeds. Go. 
lots of perennials. Oh my goodness, I could go on and on about this, but some of the ones I've started from seed would be like yarrow, echinacea, daisies. I did a lot of this in our very first apartment. There was like a little garden space, and so I started a lot of stuff from seed. Of course, there's a lot of wild perennial wildflower blends um, that have lots of gorgeous stuff, lupins and uh, flax and stuff like that, but sedums are great. Anyway, I would just suggest that you go down to your garden center, see what they have. Um, we carry a lot of the stuff that's really easy to start from seed in our bulk seed line down at our garden center, um, but you can usually find them for inexpensive prices like in four inch cans. So just ask somebody down at the garden center and just ask them which ones will spread like kind of quickly that you can divide and kind of spread around your garden. All my ornamental grasses are starting to die in the center. What can I do to stop this from happening? Mm, you need to divide them. Usually they'll start to die out in the center if you need to divide your grasses. That's what I found down at our other garden. Um, I had the same thing happen and I was just letting them kind of, they, they grow with a ring, like a healthy ring around the outside and then the inside is like just nothing. So you can start cutting those up, like dig them up and cut them into sections and then plant them out individually. I just discovered your highlights channel. There might be others who don't know about it. Ah. Not anymore. Yeah. What do you suggest tracking in a garden journal? So I, I actually don't have like a real garden journal, except videos. for videos. I mean, that kind Pretty of journal is yeah, what we do out here. I think the, the best things to document is, well, vegetable gardening is really good to document because then you can like write out what you grew this year, what varieties performed really well for you. So you can remember from year to year, which ones you want to repeat and which ones you don't want to repeat. Also like um, kind of sketching out a schematic of where you planted everything is really good because then you can do like plan your crop rotation so you don't have the same things planted in the same areas um, every single year. I also think it's good to like, especially perennials because you see shrubs and trees, those are easy to remember. Perennials for me are tough sometimes because especially if you've got a large area, there's oftentimes when I'm like, didn't I plant some of those? Didn't I bring like five of those home? Where mm -hmm. did I end up planting them? What happened to them? Somebody's coming and stealing them. Maybe they are. Yeah. At night. Yeah. I want to know what happened to the four rows of Sharon's you had planted in the four corners of the boxwoods where mm. the fountain you accidentally cracked. <laughs> just like that area is just like ugh. kind of a loss. Yeah. So I had four rows of Sharon standards or trees in my pots along our barn and they all they weren't compatible with the annuals I had below them so they started to kind of rot they were not happy I think the sun was getting to them too. I think yeah they maybe like the, the radiant heat off the barn I think it was a water issue oh. mostly and then add in like extra heat and it just isn't a good mix anyway so I they were already struggling when I planted them out in that boxwood area um, Someone called. Someone called. And uh, anyway, only one of them kind of survived. Three of them like quickly petered out after I planted them. And so I ended up taking that fourth one out because it just wasn't doing well and looking good. So anyway. That was a garden fail. That was a garden fail. Yep. How many containers and hay racks in total do you have planted this year? <laughs> do we okay. want to know? Uh, probably not. You want me to count? Yeah. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. No, I don't know, do I? 169. Whoa! Now, keep in mind that that includes the 44 hay racks and the two pots up front. So that's a huge chunk. That counts. Yeah, that's a huge chunk of... Because they all have plants in them. Yeah. And then... Um, How know, many are on drip? 14 are true drop. Um, Not oh, counting the true drops because those are kind of self-watered. Um, I think it'd be faster to count the ones that aren't on drip. Um, nine. I don't know. I would say maybe like 30 containers aren't on drip. Wow. Anyway. What college did you go to? So I actually don't have any formal training in horticulture. I just grew up in it, grew up in the industry. My parents have a garden center. They have a really large garden as well. We did a tour of it this spring. Um, so I did a lot of my learning there. Uh, formal education, I did a couple of years here at our community college. So I have a two year degree. And then I went to England to go to Bible college. I didn't even stay a whole semester. I loved England though. We've been back a couple times since. How in the world did you do any gardening while pregnant? I'm 28 weeks now and this has been a massive fail in the garden. I watched you through your whole pregnancy and thought, I'll be fine. So I feel for you. It was hard. I honestly don't know how we made it through last year gardening. Well, you were pregnant. You're big pregnant by the yeah. winter. So which by helps. the time I was 28 weeks, we were starting to go into fall. So the temperatures were dropping. And so it wasn't quite as miserable. Um, but it's still even in those beginning months, like, because let's see, May, June, July, August, I was pregnant all of those months. And it's hard to feel like, like you have the energy. Um, and 
I was in a lot of pain too because Benjamin's head was lodged up in my ribs for most of the months of mm -hmm. my pregnancy. I ended up having to have a C-section because he was still, he was transverse breech. His tummy, or his his um, head was way up in my ribs and his bum was like in my upper tummy. Anyway, um, so I was in a ton of pain. Yeah, a you lot had of to the, stand all the time. Yeah, I did. I remember at Christmas time, I was like huge pregnant and everybody was sitting around in the living room like chatting and I'm like standing in the corner just trying to like... <laughs> Trying to deal and cope with the pain. Trying to can. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so don't let this year dictate how you feel about gardening. I know it's super hard. Just like stay the course. Hey, Laura and Aaron, I live in Florida, Zone 9, and recently planted a beautiful Proven Winners Limelight Hydrangea. Mm. It's definitely protected from the afternoon sun and heat, but it seems to have sun scorch. Do you think it's dead or hope for next season? So there's a photo. Oh, my word. That looks like it's maybe beyond sun scorch. Does that look like it got enough water? No. Does it survive in zone nine? Is it a zone three through eight? Let me look it up. Oh no, it's a zone three through nine. Mm. So it should be fine that way. Um, it, you know, it may have just shocked. Um, I've had a couple of them do that. Uh, at this point, I would just hang on, keep it watered, wait until next spring, see if it pushes any new growth. If it doesn't, then you know it's gone. Um, you can also tell if it still has life in it. If you take your fingernail or your clippers and kind of lightly um, scratch up the very top layer of bark, if there's still green underneath it, then you know there's still life in there. If it's all brown and it just like cracks off and then you might have lost it. Um, you can cut it all the way back uh, if you want to. I noticed that somebody gave basically the same advice you did. And he actually responded saying, uh, I've been giving it plenty of water since I planted it. I did cut it back this morning and it's still green. Oh, okay. So keep There's it water. There's your answer. Awesome. Uh, would love any stories about life with Benjamin. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's one. When we put him down for bed almost every night, he doesn't like to have a binky in his mouth. Nope, he likes a fabric. Baby. So he yeah. likes stuffed animals, which is cute. Yeah, he like, hugs his bunny. Yeah, and what he does almost every night is he takes the ear of one of his bunnies, puts it in his mouth, and does this ring, 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 <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> And it's like the funniest sound. We can sound. hear him on the monitor. Yeah, on the wing, monitor. Wing, 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 yeah, wing. for like a long time. He'll just be sitting in there with it. It is about ring a ring a ring a ring a ring. <laughs> and then he ends up um, falling asleep. Usually, like, we lay him down in the middle of the crib, and he just, he's a wild man. Yeah, in the crib. he is. And he ends up, like, wedged in one corner, um, sleeping with a bunny ear sticking in his mouth. So he's in a walker now. Like, he oh, loves his walker. Oh, he's so cute with his walker. I don't think he's going to crawl. I think he's going to go straight to yeah. walking. He loves to stand yeah. up. He loves to, you know, hold your hands and, and walk. And he cruises fast. Hey. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you so happy? <gasps> Boom. <laughs> what is the next garden tour planned for? Uh, hopefully this week. We uh, wait oftentimes for uh, cloudy days because yeah. when it's not only is it hot in the summertime, it's like 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we could do it in the morning, but sometimes it can the be tough. The lighting's weird. Yeah, the light can just, it's bright in some areas and dark in other areas. It's really hard to film. When so it's cloudy so days, shadowy. Cloudy days are just the easiest, but we don't get very many of them. So. We have it uh, Friday this week. It says it's supposed to be partly cloudy. Um, and my mom will have Benjamin all day. So we're hoping that, um, we're hoping that the clouds are, I mean, at least out for an hour. If we could have a cloudy, cloudiness yeah. for one hour, we could get it done. But you know what? It's actually been a little bit freeing not doing garden tours every single month this year. That's what we did last year. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a little bit hard um, just because of the whole lighting issue, because a lot of times we'd have to wait till the last minute and do the tour like at dusk. Yeah, it was, it was a lot, really stressful. It doesn't seem like it should be a stressful thing, but it kind of was. Yeah, it kind of was. And there really isn't like, you know, some months there's not a whole lot of change. It's yeah. just like we're well, in maintain mode. Well, not a lot of change mode. to us, maybe. Yeah, I guess so. It's just been, it's been a little bit nice taking a break from doing that so often. I'd like to know if the phrase these ones isn't grammatically correct. I mean, I could probably Google it, but I'd love to hear <laughs> you guys address it. These ones is so not grammatically correct. Well, I've never checked to see if it, I, I don't think it's grammatically correct. I think it would just be these yeah or, i don't think like, there's any there's nothing yeah i don't think yeah. you need to say ones no. i think you just say these yeah so it's probably not correct because it's like unnecessary to say ones i hear people say these ones all the time now and especially now that i'm like kind of honed in on it yeah since people have been saying it's like, like one of those things like, like saying a whole nother 
oh, I can't stand that. Yeah. Whole nother or alls. Alls you oh, gotta do. Alls you gotta do. Or some people will say, I seen that. I seen yeah. that the other day. I seen like, this. Ah, I saw that the other day. Yeah. But then here I am saying these ones and they're probably like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I don't even, I don't even try to hide it anymore. I just <laughs> rock it. We thought about doing a shirt with that. Tell you what though, you really start to notice crutch words or not necessarily yes. crutch words, but things that you say that aren't necessarily correct when you're on yeah. camera. Mm -hmm. What are your top five annuals? Oh, okay. So my favorite one this year is Plain the Blue Salvia. I just, I didn't even plant that much of it. I think I've got like maybe eight or so in the garden and I just, it just brings me joy every time I walk by it. I just love the way it looks. I love the way the foliage looks um, and the hummingbirds like it. Uh, any type of supertunia I love, obviously. Because the red ones? No, I don't like red. Um, I love red. I like the black cherry though. That one's like a maroon red. So you can use it with pink and it looks really pretty mm -hmm. still. So there are exceptions, but any type of supertunia, just because they do so well in our area. Mm -hmm. So you just gotta like. Some people I've seen comments like, oh, more supertunia videos, but it's one like, of those plants that like really performs yeah. well here. So it's tough because like we have to plant things that do well. We're not yeah. gonna be planting you know, palm trees. Right. Because that just doesn't exist here. Right. Like a lot of succulents don't winter here. Yeah. And, um, I've also really been enjoying the lemon coral sedum this year because it just, like we have it in one area right in front of some really deep colored coleus and it's just such a beautiful contrast. The other thing is coleus. Mm, yeah, coleus. Like right to my left, I've got a huge drift of dipped in wine coleus right below some pine trees and it's just performing like here, let me pan the camera Beautiful. over a little bit. It's just so pretty. It's just got like soft morning light kind of on it right now. I just love it. Okay, so one more, I think that was four annuals. One more that I like a lot. Besides like annual grasses, I love those. Superbina, like the Superbina large lilac blue in our hay racks up front is just amazing. This time of year, garden centers have some perennials on clearance, but are pretty scraggly. Any advice on bringing uh, them back to life. Uh, a lot of times if you cut them back, uh, fertilize them, get them in the ground, keep them well watered. This year with plants ready to go in, I couldn't find biotone in any local store. Mm. In case this happens again, do you know of a good alternative? You can order biotone. Yeah, you can get it online. Yeah, so I mean, there is that, but just look for a good, um, like a starter fertilizer? Yeah, boy. Just get biotone, plant. just order it. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have experience with, because I've used Espoma for so long. I am so not a good help in that area. Order biotone, I'll put yeah. a link down below. All right, I think that's it. Did we answer all of them? Uh, not all of them, but we got through, we got through a that's lot. It's probably pretty long at this point. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for this Q and A and you know, for all the questions that you guys left. Sorry if we didn't get to yours, we just don't want this video to be an hour long. Yeah. Although sometimes I don't think that you guys would mind that maybe. Well, we have other things we need videos. to get to yeah, as well. Yeah, we do. I've got watering tours to do and yeah. Benjamin might be up from his nap. Yeah, he might be. Probably pretty soon here. Anyway, thank you guys again for hanging out and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.